Jeremy Wilkie, I wanted to elaborate in a little further detail um, on some of these technical features. So starting at the bottom of the shock again, um, you'll notice that we've got a billet clevis. Um, one of the things that we do is we, we do everything possible to basically make the parts as strong as we can, but at the same time as low mass as we can. So we spend a lot of time machining kind of intricate features that, that allow the part to be strong and lightweight. Um, you'll notice this across the board with all of our adjusters. We use four millimeter allens. We really like the four millimeter allen because it's no slip. You basically put your allen tool in it. Um, you get a very precise grip. Uh, it allows you to adjust everything without kind of slipping and, and damaging the parts. So, um, you know, again, four millimeter allen across the board with all the adjustment circuits. As we move up, um, you'll notice that we have an oversized 18 millimeter DLC coated shock shaft. Um, you know, sometimes people might ask, why, why do we do the DLC versus like, let's say one of these fancy rainbow colors or even plain chrome? Um, the, the very simple answer is DLC has the lowest coefficient of friction and the hardest surface. So when it comes down to how the shock's going to perform, that's the most important thing. And that's why we choose DLC. It's the best performance coating. Um, also, to show you visually the SKF MX Tech integrated seal head, our end cap threads onto our seal head, which is retained by a circlet. When this is tightened down onto the body tube, it creates a very strong, stable bearing surface that reduces both shock shaft load and piston wear. Um, so, it's a very important feature on this Honda shock that basically is short by design. Um, as we move up, you'll notice our our huck valve piston. Um, the huck valve is one of our flagship technologies and it's one of the reasons that the Honda shock is so impressive um, because as the shock experiences a large bottoming load, the huck valve can manage both the compression and the rebound forces, um, absorbing it, keeping the bike straight and giving the rider milliseconds to respond and recover because the huck valve is both compression and rebound. Um, as we uh, Look further up the shock, you'll notice that our body tube basically is Kashima coated, as is our reservoir. Uh, Kashima is a proprietary uh, process done in Japan. It has the um, lowest coefficient of friction and the uh, basically the hardest surface available for an aluminum and uh, an aluminum based material. So again, it's a very high performance coating. Um, very important um, when you want a shock that's going to be consistent and durable. Um, I want to talk a little bit about our hardware. Um, in, our, in our national shock, anywhere that we cannot use aluminum, where steel would be required for both strength and durability, we've, we've basically changed over to a titanium hardware. So our top out plate, our shock shaft net, our huck valve retainer screw, all of these things are made um, from titanium so we can have very light uh, overall shock weight and at the same time be very strong and durable. Um, talking a little more about the adjusters, um, in your compression adjuster we have uh, basically what we call our MX Tech 3-way which is going to be a low speed, mid speed, a low speed rebound uh, and also an integrated high speed circuit and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, what you'll see is, is our compression adjuster has a main compression stack, a subvalve stack, and a return circuit for the low speed rebound. Um, when we go over to the high speed adjuster, we have a series of cones that we use to tune the shock. Um, so the cones have different ta tapers and shapes, and we also have a combination of three different springs that we can select from to optimize the tuning for the specific bike. Um, Lastly, the membrane free piston, kind of showing you some of the details of this thing. Of course, as I talked about, we have a free piston, so we have uh, a consistent oil volume that does not leak nitrogen, and we get bladder like performance by the integration of an HNBR puck that goes in the free piston and is sandwiched by this holder. So now we have a very low surface area membrane surface that provides uh, basically easy movement at high speed, low amplitude movements, and at the same time we don't have the nitrogen loss that you would experience with a bladder.